put it in the bed. That's fine. Now, yep. Now let's see how deep do they want to be? I'll plant the rest of these. See an airplane? You gonna help mommy? Okay, okay. Dirt down. The best one. The who one. Okay. The best for seed. We're gonna put a few seeds in. The best for seed. Uh huh. You can. Okay, hold on. Poke little holes like that. Hold on, I'm gonna help you, okay? Ready? Okay, in here. Okay, we just want we just want one or two in each. Okay. Okay, hold on. in the soil books. Can I give you some to sprinkle in? No. <laughs> Seeds. I'm gonna put them right in, in here, along the edge. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Here. Look. There you go. No. Here. Yeah. We do need some over there. Can you put some over there? Yeah. All right. Welcome to another video. Brooks and I are out here in the garden kind of prepping some of the beds. Uh, a couple days ago we planted some edamame beans and some edible flowers. What's this? And right now we've kind of prepped this area and we're gonna plant some bush beans and snow peas, um, sugar snap peas um, in this area. It's what, the second week of April here? Yeah. Last year I kept track of the produce that we harvested and I estimated it to be about $700 worth of organic um, produce, which for our space doesn't feel too bad, but I know we could have grown a lot more. 
All right, so my little guy is uh, wanting to play some games, but anyway, we grew 24 salad greens. We grew 864 tomatoes. Um, that excluded the 25 big heirloom tomatoes that we grew. Um, we also grew nine beets, which we had way more, but they just didn't look that appetizing, to be honest. They were really small. I didn't plant them deep enough, so hopefully I will this year. We're doing golden beets this year. I also had, like, unlimited scallions. It was hard to measure because um, we basically took whenever we wanted, and we had snow peas, sugar snap peas, and a handful of different herbs, basil, cilantro, dill, parsley, which we're all gonna be planting again this year. All right, so I wanna continue a conversation that I started outside and to kind of wrap together this video that I'm putting together on gardening, the review of our garden, what we're planning on doing this year, and I guess ultimately reasons why we plant gardens, which for starters, food that we grow in our own garden is always gonna be the healthier choice over anything that we might be able to find or buy. Food that's grown closer to us is always gonna be healthier. Obviously, you also save a little bit of money and create a little bit of self-sufficiency, which is always a good thing, um, at least knowing how to grow your own food so that if the need arises, you could produce some actual food for you to eat. Okay. Okay. Don't get back here. All, right. All right. Outside. Well, we're not going to put it outside. You want it right there on the couch right now? I will show it. Okay. You can do it. But mommy's talking to the camera for one more minute, okay? And mommy hurt. Mommy's hurt? The show it. Mommy, the hurt my back. Ah, uh, you might hit into mommy's back, it's true, but try not to, okay? Also thinking about the environmental impact of consuming food that's grown locally versus eating your apples from Washington if you live in New York or eating our avocados from Mexico. Obviously we can't grow things like avocados here, but to be eating local apples when they're in season, to be eating other local fruits, salad greens, all sorts of other vegetables, they can be eat, they can be grown here and we should be eating them when they are in season. Another piece is the need to connect with nature. When you have a garden, your hands have to be able to be getting in the soil, getting dirty. It also involves your family and it's an important connection for kids to make that the food we buy in grocery stores is not made that way from the beginning. You have to plant these little seeds, cultivate them, give them lots of love, water, sunlight, and eventually they grow into food producing plants that we can then pick when they're ripe to enjoy as our breakfast, lunch, or dinner. There's a certain level of pride that I think even if you're just a small um, garden grower like myself, there's something very satisfying about picking a big basket full of greens and tomatoes and cucumbers and whatever you're growing, but to have that big bounty and to not have to open your fridge for every, every meal and reload it with food from the grocery store. So. Here we've really been prioritizing this garden this year. We are improving it. We're adding a little bit more bed space. We are growing tomatoes, cucumbers, spinach, rainbow chard, golden beets, lettuce, basil, cilantro, mint, oregano, zucchinis, pepper. Uh, we also planted a few um, purple edamame beans as well as all our beans are already in the garden, we are doing some edible flowers, which is, I feel like, a whole nother topic that I'm not that educated in, in terms of being able to really 
speak fully about it, but perhaps as I continue my quest to understand why and what's so awesome about them, but for starters, growing edible flowers, you put them in your salads or on your meals or in your soups as a garnish and it just looks beautiful. So speaking from that piece, when your food looks beautiful, how can it not be more nourishing to your body? To me, I feel like there's got to be something to that and maybe there's not, but also thinking about your fruits or other vegetables that you're picking, some of them do go to flower af when they're all done. And in some ways, the flower of the plant is the fullest expression of itself prior to it dying. And so perhaps consuming that full flower has some um, effect more on a spiritual, emotional, non-visible plane in terms of nutrients. Um, but we've dedicated a decent amount of space to planting bachelor buttons, calendula, zinnias, and we've got lots of bee balm in our um, yard. The deer don't like it. It's really delicious to add into salads. It even has a nice little sweet flavor, very colorful, pinks, purples. I don't know if there's yellows of them, but orangey reds, but that's a great addition also. The season is just about changing here in New York. We are a few days away from planting some of the starts that we have cultivated into the ground. I will be direct seeding a few things, but I did a lot of starts this year, so I'm hoping for a big harvest and uh, we will be planting our cucumbers, zucchini, I think our peppers are ready. The weather will not be going below 40 degrees in a couple days, at least projected from that point on for the next 12 days. That brings us into early May, mid-May, and that will be, um, I think, the end of frost. If it's not, we'll cover the plants and I think they'll be just fine. But it's time to get these babies growing in the soil outside in sunlight and they will hopefully thrive. Uh, mommy. Are you ready for mommy to stop the video? You want a little attention, son? Yeah. Thank you for letting me share a few of my thoughts about the garden with people. Hmm? You want to tell them how old you are now? Yeah. How old are you? Two. Two! Brooks is two. We've got a lot more things planned. Brooks has been really enjoying bath time, so I have been able to do a little bit of personal work while he's been in the bath. So that's been amazing and allowed me some freedom to plan out things like this video as well as others. So I look forward to sharing more and I will talk to you soon if you have any advice or comments or questions. Feel free to leave those comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with anyone you feel might get something from this video. We'll see you soon. See you soon. See you soon. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off.